Part two of how to know you're burned out and how you can start to recover and feel healthy and whole and like yourself again. Anyone ever burnt out and you say, I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm just so flippin' exhausted. Those are signs of burnout. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I'm unmotivated. I'm tired all the time. I feel disconnected. I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not eating properly. I'm not moving my body. These are all signs. Now, we can also point those towards depression and anxiety, but all of these labels of burnout, anxiety, depression are all symptoms of what's going on in our life, all symptoms of chronic stress that isn't being effectively managed through the nervous system. And we get stuck in fight, flight, and freeze. And when we're stuck there over a course of time, your body is living in chronic emergency mode. So this is how I help my clients. How do I know? Been there, done that. And there are different levels of burnout. First level, I just need a weekend to rest and reboot. Monday, I'm good. Second level, I need to put some boundaries in place. I need to check in with myself and create a plan where there's some self-care, feeling good pretty quick. All the way to what I call, you've lost your fourth wind, which can take months and months and months and months. For me, it's been at least a year and a half of healing and recovering from burnout. So I don't want this for you. Let's prevent it. Or if you're already in st somewhere between stage one and four of burnout, let's get you back on track because healing is possible. Feeling like yourself, feeling whole and complete, loving life and not just feeling like we're stressed out and struggling. We're here to do more than get through the day. So if you wake up and your goal is, I just need to get through today, this is a good chance that you need to start to step back and really look at what's happening in your life. Okay, here for you, full support. These are some of the things that you can start to do to recover from burnout, to regain your strength, your vitality, and your resiliency. Now, I su suggest that you start with the one that resonates with you most, that you're like, I can do that. The second thing I do recommend is that you get a coach. These are some of the things that I specialize in. I specialize in regulation of the nervous system. I specialize in somatic training, the use of breath work. I work with nutrition and movement and energy medicine, as well as hypnotherapy to look back at what are your limiting beliefs that had you work so hard? This was me. My limiting belief was I'm not smart enough, so I have to work hard. And all my life, I dove into work because if I want to be successful, I've got to work. And if I stop working, I get behind. If I stop working, then things aren't going to move forward. And in the last year and a half, I have learned how to work effectively, how to have balance, how to have fun and play because I released that limiting belief of I'm not smart enough. I'm not enough. I'm not deserving. So these are all the things I can support you with. Let's move forward. So don't do them all at once, but awareness number one, there's something going on and it's time for me to make a change somewhere. I need to make self-care a priority. One of the simplest things that you can do is get your breath going. Breathing into the belly, slow, deep breaths. Before you get out of bed in the morning, just slow yourself down. Get grounded, root, and anchor. Connecting with Mother Nature and your breath is key because when we're up in our head and we're like zooming, right? I'm burned out. Oh my gosh, if I stop, I'm going to... I'm not going to get going again. Anyone ever feel that way? So I keep going. I'm not trained. Ka -chook, ka -chook, ka -chook. The brain starts thinking of 20 things. I'm too much in my head. I'm getting overwhelmed. Oh my gosh. And it's like everything's moving on high speed. When we come into our breath and we slow down and we connect with ourselves, connect down into the earth, everything out there 
also slows down. So the breath is so powerful. Just even that box breathing in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. Different breathing techniques. I'm going to teach those in part three, but that is your biggest gift slow things down. We think of 20 things, the universe gives us 20 things. We think of one thing, I call it one banana, the universe gives us one thing. So start with your breath. It will shift you from the sympathetic fight, flight, freeze, <clears throat> the parasympathetic where you can start to think again. It's like taking the water from here down to here where all of a sudden you're like, okay, I can do this. So self-care, making sure you get enough sleep, go to bed earlier, don't stay up late. When we are burned out, we start to burn the midnight oil because we're wired but tired. So we might binge watch TV, we might spend too much time on social media, we need to learn to have a bedtime routine where we're having a hot bath, we're doing some things that nurture, go for a walk outside, do some breaths, you know, maybe be in your garden a little bit, read a book, do some breath work, listen to some meditation. Establish a nighttime routine that is all about you and self-care for you. My friends, you cannot give from an empty cup. We hold two cups, one that we give to others and one that's from us. And if we haven't filled our cup, we have nothing to give. And what happens is we burn out the chemistry, the adrenal so much. So establishing a bedtime routine is perfect. Next, self-care again. Make sure you factor in movement. If you are exhausted and burned out, don't go for a run and put more and more stress on your body. Go for a walk. Go to a stretch class. Do some gentle Pilates or some yoga. Do some form of movement that is nurturing and self-care. As your strength comes up, you're going to be able to elevate the intensity, but there's no point in just putting fuel on the fire. Go to start with self-care, yoga, Pilates, stretch, breath work, restorative movement. Beautiful. Next, notice what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to. A lot of times people who have a trait of burning out overcommit. We say yes to what we want to say no to. Or if you're like me, everything's super interesting, right? Oh, that's cool. I'd love to do that. Oh, that's really cool. Why don't I do that? So the next one is align with your passions. So I've got an upcoming workshop where I talk about learning what your passions are now. What are your top five passions? And all of your decisions are made in alignment with that passion. So every, even though something seems kind of cool, something seems kind of interesting, if it's not in direct alignment with your passions, table it for now. Maybe that's something you can start a little later when you've got your life back on track. So know your passions, recheck with your purpose, and your decisions of your yeses and nos are always in support of your passions. You're not letting anyone else down by saying no. If it's a no inside your body, contracted, tight, ah, say no, not now. Remember when someone makes a request, you can accept, you can de decline, and you can counter. It's perfectly fine, they're just making a request. And the same if you make a request to other, they can accept, decline, or counter. And, and then you, you go from there. So boundaries are within that, right? Yes, thank you. We want, to be, we want to be protected and connected. So when we have boundaries, we, we don't have to take in what everybody says, protected. We don't have to say everything that we're feeling, protected. But we can also stay connected. And that's where requests and choices come from. And then the next is managing your time. We don't have to be doing all the time. What you'll actually start to find is that the more you factor in rest and sleep, activities that you enjoy, 
doing some things that light you up, that make you laugh, make you smile, make you feel good, you'll find that you'll be more productive on the other side. So these are just some tips. Now, again, you don't want to do them all, but sort of go, okay, I, I can take that one on. Maybe I'll go to one restorative Pilates class, or I'm going to commit to uh, walking with a friend um, twice a week. Notice how it feels. Breath work is free. Be aware of your breathing. Start there. Don't normally eat breakfast. Make yourself a green smoothie. Notice how it feels. One step at a time. You didn't get here overnight and you won't recover overnight. But every day that you make choices that support your health and your well-being and your recovery is a day that you are getting better. Reach out. Let's talk. I understand burnout. And what we don't want it to do is have you self-destruct where you lose your job, your business, relationships become at stake, right? Your health, your vitality. We're here to do more than struggle. We're here to enjoy life. Life is meant to be fun. So let's support you in recovering from burnout, feeling good again, coming back home to you and enjoying life again. Thanks for watching.